You might not know it if you walked by, but one of the largest transportation projects in the US has been happening right here. 14 stories below Manhattan. For the last 15 years, construction crews have been blasting, boring and building an entirely new terminal beneath the iconic Grand Central, all without shutting down service. The Eastside Access Project is the largest new train terminal to be built in the US since the 1950s, with 8 miles of tunnelling and 40 miles of new tracks. Constructed in the middle of the city that never sleeps, the mega project's challenges and price tag have been immense. This is how New York City built some of the most expensive railway tracks on Earth. When Grand Central first opened in 1871, it served just three rail lines. A number of renovations later, it's now home to 44 platforms with 67 tracks and an 88,000 square foot concourse that hosts the occasional movie set. The idea for the East Side Access Project connecting the Long Island Railroad to Grand Central first came about in the 1960s. In 1969, construction began on a four-track double-decker tunnel connecting Queens and Manhattan. The top level was eventually used for a subway line, but the bottom level has sat dormant for three decades, just waiting for the East Side Access Project's completion. After a lifetime of delays and now billions over budget, Major construction work on the project is finally complete and the grand opening is planned for 2022. 162,000 people are expected to use the new terminal every day, reducing commutes by up to 40 minutes. That's on top of, or technically below, the 750,000 who normally visit Grand Central each day in pre-pandemic times. I was here when we had, there was nothing created under, underground. There was no space available. There was just virgin rock. And now there's a city underground. Michael Pujak has worked on this project for 19 years of his life, and he's seen firsthand how complicated it is to build under some of New York's most expensive real estate. One strategy they used? Build straight under the middle of Park Avenue to avoid the foundations of existing buildings. Uh, all the work in, in the underground that we built, and these network of tunnels are about 150 feet below Park Avenue. So we're deep, we're down below uh, the existing foundations uh, along the alignment, and we're also down below any of the uh, active uh, New York City transit uh, structures that we have. So we built that entire um, site and excavated both the mining of the tunnels as well as the drill blast operation, all from uh, accessing through Queens, through the existing 63rd Street Tunnel. Roughly 3,000 blasts were done beneath the terminal to make space for the new caverns. At first, the crew worked around the train schedules at night, scheduling blasts anywhere from 1 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Eventually, they were allowed to blast during the day while trains continued to run above. Now, because Grand Central Terminal is so busy, the crew couldn't bring their materials in through the street, so they travelled into the site via rail lines from the Bronx and Queens. Because the geology of the tunnelling points were so different, two different types of tunnel boring techniques were used to create the double-decker twin tunnels. In Manhattan, you had the challenges of the hard rock, you had the challenges of some shear zones that you had to mine through, as well as the blasting coordination. On the queen side of the, of the house, you had ground treatment that had to be done, and you were mining underneath an active railroad. Since there was no exit point for the TBM, they actually pulled the machine back out the way it came and backfilled part of the tunnel with concrete. In the end, 1.5 million yards of rock was cleared out of the tunnels back to Queens. That's enough to cover the entirety of Central Park, and then some. Perhaps the most complicated part of the project was expanding Harold into Locking, the busiest railroad junction in the country. More than 700 trains pass through here every day, and a series of switches enables them to move from one track to another. To give the Long Island Railroad trains access to the new terminal, 
and entirely new interlocking needed to be built to add a third track into the mix, again all without disrupting service. When it opens to the public in 2022, Grand Central's newest terminal will feature eight new tracks, four passenger platforms, mezzanines, a 350,000 square foot passenger concourse, and 25,000 square feet of new retail space. We're going to step away from this program where we're going to have enhanced um, a landmark like Grand Central with a, with a whole city below ground that had never existed. That's pretty rewarding. The East Side Access project has been a long time in the making. And as with building anything in New York, it's often just as much of a political feat as it is a logistical one. And we're going to finish this. If I have to go down there with a shovel myself, we are going to get this done. So help me God. Throughout the decades, people have questioned why the project's taken so much time and money. A recent Vox analysis found that the US has some of the highest costs in the world when it comes to rapid rail transit. But in New York, those costs are even higher. At one point, one of the east side access tunnels cost $1 million per foot. By the end, the budget had ballooned from early estimates of $2.2 billion in the late 90s to $11 billion. New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority has said its high construction costs can be explained in part because of aging utilities, expensive land, strict regulations, and a high density. Rail work in New York City is far from over. The $11.6 billion Hudson Tunnel project on the other side of Manhattan has been trying to get off the ground, or rather through the ground, for years. And the subway system is in need of repair across the network. We're not sure this new terminal will be as iconic as the one upstairs, but building a massive new bit of infrastructure like this under one of the world's busiest cities is no small accomplishment. And if you ever find yourself strolling down Park Avenue through the rows of luxury buildings, just know that the most expensive property might actually be below your feet. This video was made possible by Bluebeam. Learn more at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.